the individual TIs who are being gang stalked, hyper gamed, they are beta tests. This is, this is being done to gather data on how to apply it to the masses all at once. They're learning. This is that we're in the, we're in the process where they're building their, their entire infrastructure to run the whole human race. And they had created a digital model of Earth and everybody in it down to a digital GPS coordinates model up to even a vertical dimension of one and a half centimeters, every building, every roadway, everything. And what they want to do is create an Internet of Things where in digital space they know exactly what you're doing in real time. This is an article from 10 years ago. Sentient World, War Games on the Grandest Scale. The DOD is developing a parallel to planet Earth with billions of individual nodes to reflect every man, woman and child this side of the dividing line between reality and AR. Humanity will be have their brains connected to artificial intelligence and human consciousness, human thought, human emotion as we've known it will be over because every thought, every emotional response will come from AI. He who controls AI will then control every human's perceptions directly who is connected to AI. In other words, you'll be a computer terminal on someone else's internet. They're using two interfaces, like we said, the brain to computer interface. That's the supercomputer, the sophisticated and advanced access scale system. Downloads all of your, you know, all electromagnetic activity, all these synaptic responses, the electromagnetic emissions of the victim's brain is downloaded at speed of light. Energy travels at speed of light, so they can download, upload at speed of light. Sure. Back into a database as they build, as the supercomputer is programmed to build uh, using various software programs, a cognitive model of your brain. And what we are trying to do here, your friends and family, this organization, is to use this precious knowledge to build machines that can actually create, manipulate, and use these parallel realities in the service of this one. We want to grab those parallel realities from this abstract space in which they live and crunch them down into this chip. Uh, to eventually achieve direct behavioral control over you. And then based on you know that cognitive model being complete, to, to be, begin to be able to predict and influence in advance the reference choices of the victim during thought composition. As the victim is formulating his thoughts and preparing to act, the supercomputer already has that persona and psyche, all your emotional state downloaded, every vector of your emotional state downloaded, so I can already predict and influence mm -hmm. those events in sure. your life in advance sure. and achieve direct behavioral control over you. They're putting in the 5G systems that literally will slowly kill our humanity while they control us as biological androids. They now say we're going to merge the machines. They now say that we are the robots. Teleoperation allows a human to provide guidance to the robot to move in a way that we find good. Now let's say I'm a human pilot wizard of Ozing the robot. If I wanted to pick something up from the table as a robot, my teleoperator would look down, look at the field of view, look up, look at their hand, move it over, feel the tactile sensors in the hand, close the hand on the object and pick it up. So having something that's a human makes that a lot easier. Because of my responsibilities in surveillance as a otherwise normal security specialist, uh, I was showed this technology at work. And it was through the perspective, of course, of the camera. And what I was told that it was obvious it was being uh, used through the eyes of the targets. Um, so I have seen it and it is absolutely remarkable it's just like a first person you know video game or something where you you see right through the eyes of the individual now let's say i'm a human pilot wizard of ozing the robot i could have an overlay that says this person is distressed or lying or otherwise some kind of useful information that i might not be able to tell augmented from the machine so if i was a robot stood up on stage and my teleoperating pilot did this, my robot would do that, and now I can look over there, and now I can look over there. The teleoperation is a superpower in helping robots learn. In fact, the very nature of the research and development program that is going on in Seattle, Washington, and I think uh, by extension what's being done to TIs around the country is very, um, is very largely geared towards the monitoring of human beings for the specific purpose of recording every aspect of human existence to monitor 
our thoughts and to monitor our emotions and our feelings to inform computer software that is used on robots, that is used on computers themselves to make them as, as human-like as possible. And obviously computers are better at things than people in lots of different ways. So now imagine not only can they do everything that a human can do, but they can do everything that the best human at any task could do better than them. In 2003 they launched what's called the AI system. Mm -hmm. which is an uh, intelligent supercomputer with the intelligence of a human being, mm -hmm. in other words, an, a smart human being, yeah. but able to think 10 trillion times faster yeah. with the access to all known knowledge and history and a complete access to the, to the Internet and all of the communication pathways. So you're dealing with a system of remote neural networks. That's what's targeting you, okay? Remote neural networks, okay, with a will, intellect, and emotion of their own integrated into a package that consolidates them in human form. So everything that's ever been built in the history of AI, you can pack into one of these machines and give that capability to a human-like robot. So the, the form factor doesn't limit you in using these things. You can still use all of the techniques of modern AI. So if I was a robot stood up on stage and my teleoperating pilot did this, my robot would do that, and now I can look over there, and now I can look over there. Um, as far as I'm aware, it's real time. There may be a second or two delay, but it is as it is happening. They can actually see through the eyes of the target. It's done all remotely. And that is rendered, of course, in uh, essentially real time on a computer screen. And then it is to the point where it's so accurate, where you can actually see the individual pores on someone's face, uh, see scars and nicks and so forth. And so you can understand how if you had several people, for example, that you were able to do this, you can uh, through, see through their eyes in a room or on a street corner or within an office building, wherever it is, you can get total situational awareness simply by looking through their eyes and you can see through basically three, four, it's like being three or four or five different people all at the same time. The world outside of us is very big. This room, say, is much bigger than my head. But somehow, in some real sense, I have the room inside my head. And it's not just the room, it's the city. And it's not just the city, it's the country. It's not just the country, I can think of the whole planet. And it's highly, highly valuable uh, for intelligence purposes and military purposes, corporate espionage purposes. And uh, it is amazing the extent to which this technology works. It is, it's so far advanced beyond what most people are aware of, it's truly mind-blowing. And I think that's a big part of educating people is making them understand that, you know, fortunately or unfortunately, this mm -hmm. is possible and it is being done right now today. So how, how is this possible? And what I want to point out is the size. So my head's small. Well, not too small. It's small. Small compared to all that. How is it possible that all that's in here? And uh, What's come to be understood in the cutting edge of modern AI is that there is a really interesting, fascinating answer to this. And it has to do with the fact that the world has, has patterns, structure. So you may be familiar with fractals. So fractals look very complicated, but they're generated by a tiny little thing that you can write down in a few, a few numbers. And the world is like this. Images, like natural images, like what I'm looking at, have so much structure that they can be shrunk and compressed into a very tiny, what AI people call representation. So what our brains seem to do is build a very, very good compressed representation of the world, call it a model. So just like if I have a building and there's like a blueprint or a scale model of the building, Imagine I have the whole world and all of its concepts and I shrink it down into this weird compressed representation so that it fits inside my brain. That same thing happens with the computer. Uh, the data is sent to the computer and then it is rendered. And from what I understand, that's where this technology is right now. The cutting edge is trying to marry, you know, the software that's used to render it on the computer and the actual uh, detecting of the signal and the hacking of the signal within the human mind. And of course, part of that program is Obama's Brain Initiative, a multi-billion dollar program. DARPA's got a huge chunk of that. Is there progress in the Brain Initiative? Is this investment, the public investment, yielding important new insights? Well, it's, so far it has actually developed, it, it's resulted in the development of a full brain scale activity map of what goes on in the brain 
as we do various things, seeing into the brain and for being able to manipulate the activities of the brain and to, in a sense, mimic them and maybe supply them artificially.